Hi, it's Mike here from Hudson Valley Foodie uh, Food Blog. Just going to make a quick video for you. Um, it's going to be a raw video, actually. You might hear kids screaming in the background and whatnot um, of how to make perfect corned beef. Um, quick about corned beef is I remember when I was young, my grandfather used to make awesome corned beef, and I never really knew how he did it. Um, I never cared to know until I got a little older, you know, he passed away, and I just could never figure out how to make good corned beef, but it's so simple. <clears throat> with any piece of meat, pretty much, that's kind of general statement, but with most any piece of meat, um, low and slow is going to get you tender. That's what you need to do to make a piece of meat tender. And since I've learned that over the years of cooking, same thing applies to corned beef, it's no different. You need to simmer it for three hours, that's it. That's, that's the trick. Um, you can add beer in it, whatever, but there's no secret thing that you have to put two pieces of pepper or a dash of vinegar that's going to make it tender. It's all uh, fairy tale stuff. So I got myself some cabbage here. I cut it in quarters. I left the core in so it holds together nice in the pot. I have a pot over here. I'm putting it in. Um, and again, I said this is a raw video. I have two kids in the background. One's eating in the high chair and another one's sleeping on the uh, couch on his little body pillow. So, you might hear some screaming and yelling here and there. If you follow what I do, you're going to get perfect corned beef every time. Um, oops, there goes the potato. Let me wash that off. Got a bunch of potatoes. I'm just going to throw them in the pot, too. I got the pot over here, like I said. Okay, and then next, we're going to get into our corned beef. This is a brisket that I actually corned myself. I'm not trying to make a sophisticated video. I'm trying to make something easy for people. So this is a corned beef. Uh, just pretend you got a corned beef from the store. Flat cut, point cut, whatever you got. Um, flat cut's very nice. Um, point cut is a cut across the top. But again, don't make it too... Um, too hard on yourself just cook it and you're probably better off with like a flat cut or, or something like that point cut tends to be fattier and a little cheaper I'm gonna make some pastrami out of this as well in another time okay so this is my home brine corned beef it smells pretty good looks pretty good too. I think my boy's done eating on his high chair. Let me throw this out. It's big. And I'm going to cut this in half to make some pastrami. And that'll be enough corned beef, I think. Yeah, so I always wondered how my grandfather did it, and then I finally figured it out, and it's just so easy, you know? So, I'm take that piece of corned beef right there. I leave the fat on it. Fat has a lot of flavor. Throw that in our pot here. Let me rinse my hands. And then we're going to move this out of the way. Let's see if we can't get the pot in here. So I got a big pot. Um, we're going to fill the pot just over the corned beef with water. Um, you know what? I need to rinse this first. I'm shooting a video, so I'm on the spot. Um, I, after you take your corned beef out of your bag, rinse it. Otherwise, you're going to get this foamy stuff and all this nasty stuff from the blood and the corned beef. We're going to rinse it, put the corned beef back in, put some pickling spice in there. You don't really need it. Don't worry about it if you don't have it. Um, and cover it about an inch with water. And then we'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back, um, ready to make our perfect, flawless corned beef. Um, what you want to do is after you put it in the pot, you want to bring it to a boil, okay? And then you want to lower it to about, in between like low and two. Whatever the setting on your stove is, that's going to make you have small bubbles popping up here and there. You don't want a rolling boil, you just want bubbles popping up here and there. If it's boiling, it's okay, um, but simmering is what you're really looking for, and that's going to get you your perfect corned beef. So just to recap, don't overthink this. Put your corned beef in the pot 
with cabbage or Brussels sprouts, whatever you want to use. Um, carrots, throw in potatoes. Fill it up with water till it just covers the corned beef. Bring it to a boil. Then bring it down to simmering where you're going to see little bubbles popping up here and there. And then simmer it for three hours exactly. Um, a little more, a little less is not going to hurt it either. Um, but that's what you're going to want to do. You could always throw a beer or two in there and give it some flavor. But that's going to make your perfect corned beef. And we'll check back and it's done in three hours. Okay. Okay, so we're back, and it's been three hours simmering the corned beef. Remember, that's your key to make good corned beef, is you want to simmer it, and you want to see little bubbles here and there. Every few seconds, there should be bubbles, um, and simmer it for three hours at that temperature. You're better off having more bubbles than less. If you're unsure, um, it would be better to be hotter to, to cook it for three hours. And now this is an important step too, is that it's been out for about 20 minutes out of the water. You're really supposed to let meat rest, uh, depending on the size of the piece, uh, anywhere from 5 minutes. Sometimes people let stuff rest for like an hour for like a turkey. And that's, this is things that chefs teach you. Um, Gordon Ramsay once said that um, he, he'll let a turkey rest for 2 hours after he takes it out of the oven. It just lets the juices redistribute and everything. It lets the meat settle. And in this case, with the corned beef, it's going to make it easier to slice. Um, so, that's about it. Let's slice some up. Sharp knife helps, too. See, it's been resting for 20 minutes and it's still nice and hot. Probably could rest longer. If you start slicing it right away, it'd probably fall apart. You see, it's falling apart over there. And there you have it. If you don't feel like waiting 20 minutes and you just want to pull it apart and eat it, go ahead and do that too. But this will get you tender, good corned beef every time. Uh, just to go over it. You're going to put potatoes and um, cabbage or Brussels sprouts or whatever you want to use in a pot. Put the corned beef in the pot. Fill it with water. Um, about an inch over the corned beef. Put beer in it if you want or whatever else that you think you might want to put in there. It's really up to you. And then simmering it, bringing it to a boil. Um, then lowering it down to a simmer and leaving it there for three hours. Let it simmer. Alright, I hope that helps you. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Enjoy your corned beef and St. Patty's Day.